Do not miss any of our cool videos. Subscribe to our channel for latest updates. Click on the bell icon now. Do you have a Raspberry Pi and you feel like it's getting a little too hot when you touch the CPU? In this video, I'm going to be discussing about one of the Raspberry Pi uh, accessories called the Raspberry Pi 4 case with a built-in fan. In this video, I'm going to be discussing about who should use the case, under what circumstances you should definitely use a case, and the potential performance benefits you might gain out of your Raspberry Pi when you use the case. So without further ado, let's get started. The definite way to tell that your Raspberry Pi is overheating is when you see a thermometer symbol on your Raspberry Pi desktop. What that indicates is that your CPU is in excess of 80 degrees and your CPU is actively throttling down in performance to ensure that it does not exceed uh, beyond the thermal threshold of 90 degrees. As a consequence to this, your Raspberry Pi will intentionally throttle the performance in order to prevent it from pretty much melting down. Under normal use cases, your Raspberry Pi is perfectly fine with passive code. That, in fact, that's why it just comes like this. But under certain workloads, for example, you're doing some machine learning applications where you require the CPU at 100% for extended periods of time, or you have a Raspberry Pi home server where your Raspberry Pi is actively transcoding videos and sending it through Wi-Fi, your CPU might be used extensively for a sustained period of time that might make that might heat up the SOC to such a high temperature. In that case, you definitely it is definitely recommended that you get a Raspberry Pi case in order to ensure that your Pi stays cool and also it increases the longevity of the Pi as the overheating the overheating CPU can also heat the surrounding components and reduce the lifespan of the Pi. The kit comes with a Raspberry Pi case, a fan, and two types of screws, both for different purposes. Take out the bottom case of the Raspberry Pi case. Find out the studs, and that's where the both section of the Raspberry Pi fits in. Insert the Raspberry Pi, and make sure it's aligned. Make sure the ports are aligned with the port holes. Once it's in, take the top half of the case, take the fan, and insert the fan onto the fan holdings. Ensure that the fan is inserted in the correct orientation, such a way that the fan sucks out, sucks the air from the uh, outside of the case and blows it onto the pie. Take the small included screws and screw down the fan. Pro tip: uh, whenever you fasten screws to a device, make sure you do it in a cross pattern so that you wouldn't flex the device and potentially break it. Once that's done, take the base of the uh, case, insert the side vent, and take the top half of the case and fix it in. Make sure the port studs come to on the port side of the pie. Before inserting it fully, take the fan cable and connect it to pin number 4 and 6 of the Raspberry Pi, which is the 5 volt and the ground respectively. That will be used to power the fan. Once done, Make sure the case fits in properly. And finally, take the longer screws and
slightly different from the what you're seeing here as this is a custom chart but it more or less means the same thing and as you can see this is the results the top graph shows the temperature of the Pi and the bottom graph shows the speed at which the CPU is running at so the red uh, the red graph uh, is the Pi without the cooling and the blue graph is Pi with the cooling and as you can see there is a huge gap in temperature difference the Pi with the cooling at idle starts at around 50 ish degrees while with the cooling it starts at slightly below 40 degrees and once it's ramped up to 100 percent the Pi without cooling shoots up to 83 ish degrees celsius and the Pi with cooling just is slightly above 50 degrees C this is a massive 30 degrees of difference of the Pi and you can see the consequences of the Pi without cooling in the graph below where it shows the speed at which your CPU is running now until 80 degrees celsius the pi without cooling is running at a constant 1.5 gigahertz or 1500 megahertz but once it crosses the 80 degrees uh, shifting from 1 gigahertz and 1.5 gigahertz in order to control the temperature from increasing further that is why you see the graph below the red line keeps going up and down constantly whereas the blue line on the second graph is constantly at 1.5 gigahertz again this what this means is that the pi with the cooling has much more better performance because it constantly runs at a constant 1.5 gigahertz rather than shuffling between 1 gigahertz and 1.5 this is what is known as thermal throttling to further improve your cooling you can also invest in something called a heatsink which is basically a metal a metal slab with fins on it this is to effectively spread the heat from the small square of the Raspberry Pi SoC onto a larger, much larger surface area. The heatsink can be attached onto the Pi CPU by using a thermal epoxy. The thermal epoxy's function is to attach the heatsink to the Pi securely. The epoxy is also to fill in the small irregularities between the CPU die itself and the heatsink so that there is an optimal flow of heat from the CPU to the heatsink. Couple this with a fan, where the fan continuously blows air to it and as a result of the hot air gets dispersed, you get even further performance benefit. Now you must be wondering what you could, what are the benefits of having such a huge thermal headroom. One, it does definitely ensure the longevity of the Pi. And two, if you're confident about yourself, you could potentially overclock the Pi for even better performance. Although I could definitely not recommend this to the uninitiated as you could potentially permanently damage your Pi and that's definitely not covered under the warranty. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it and if you found the video useful, please share and subscribe. And my name is Thomas and I hope you learned something.